Israel and Palestine. I was reading about the recent events, which are terrible in every way, and I was thinking about how all of this could have been avoided altogether. In fact, how did this all come to be in the first place? I remember learning about the UN partition plan a few years ago that was proposed in 1947 and how the UN effectively tried to divide Palestine into two communities, one for the Jews and one for the Palestinians. This failed to eventuate into anything. But it did get me thinking, if this was to go through, would this have been the end of the Arab-Israeli conflicts? Would there finally be peace? Would Hamas just be a food dip and not a terrorist org? <sighs> Probably not, but it's still interesting to theorize. So, to start off, why was the 1947 petition plan for Palestine rejected? There's a few reasons as to why this was initially rejected. In 1947, Palestine belonged to the British Empire, and the plan called for petition between both an Arab and Jewish state amongst growing tensions between both communities. The Jews had been migrating en masse to Palestine before World War II, and this had only accelerated after the end of World War II. There was a desire for the Jews to receive their own homeland, which, after that last conflict, felt very justified. The plan put forward, however, was deeply opposed by the Arabs, as the Jews only accounted for roughly 33% of the total population at the time, and the Arabs had watched on angrily as their numbers in the region were beginning to decrease due to immigration from overseas into Palestine. So the Jews were willing to accept the plan, but the Palestinians and other neighbouring Arab states all rejected and voted against the plan's fruition. Now you're probably thinking that the Palestinians were being uncooperative, and it's probably really easy to point fingers and say, hey, the Palestinians aren't willing to cooperate and they rejected the plan. But I don't think it's unreasonable for them to reject the plan, considering that all they wanted was statehood from the British as well, and they owned the majority of the land and the population within it at the time. From there, I guess we're pretty familiar with how the rest of history panned out, multiple wars and conflicts, human rights abuses on both sides, and international horror scenes like some of the ones we've seen within the last week or so. Anyway, we're getting into territory now that isn't part of the video. I'm focusing on what would happen if this plan was put into motion and how would it look and evolve over time. So, firstly, the year is 1947. The British Empire is really waning in influence and power and the native population of Palestine has had enough. Countries nearby like Jordan have achieved independence in 1946 as well as Syria in the same year and would only make sense if Palestine is up next. But the ethnic makeup of the country, which now includes Jews as well as local Arab Palestinians, creates difficulties within the region. To try and alleviate the demand for independence as well as ensure that a conflict will not ensue, the UN puts forward a petition plan which divides the territory of Palestine into two states. The plan looks like this. For whatever reason, let's say that both sides agree to this plan. A large portion of Palestinians did not agree to the idea of a petition state, but even more so were against it because it inaccurately represented the Arab population to land allocation ratio. For the sake of the video not going for 3 hours, let's just stick to the UN plan and not focus on the specifically populated areas. So right off the bat, this is what the map looks like. It has a bit of a jigsaw puzzle vibe but it's the best that could be done with how separated the communities looked at the time. So, in 1947, there were roughly a million Arab Palestinians and around 630,000 Jews in Palestine. From what the UN map provides, the Jewish capital sits at Tel Aviv and the Palestinian capital is at Ramallah. Both sides claim Jerusalem, but it gets put under an international zone because that always works so well historically. <laughs> so now that the map is drawn up and we have roughly the same areas for both states, what happens? Well, the two sides live happily ever after. Every issue that arises between the two new states is resolved by friendly cooperation and international assistance from the UN. Jerusalem hosts a peace conference every year. Spoiler, this does not happen. So, right off the bat, we see Israel, which is still surrounded by states that are probably not the friendliest, being diplomatically isolated or receiving very limited diplomatic support from the neighboring Arab states. Even if Israel and Palestine are both cooperative with one another, I feel as though Israel still would not receive recognition from the Arab states despite attempting to settle matters in a more peaceful or friendly way. This might not be as permanent though, because there is more attempts at reconciliation by both Palestine and Israel in this timeline. Israel would still probably be pulled into conflicts with the neighbouring Arab states, and Palestine would feel as though they lost a large portion of their land to Jewish settlement. If Palestine and Israel never fought outright, their diplomatic relations would probably still be hostile or at the very least, frosty. The Cold War would resume the same way, and maybe fighting would be deliberately suppressed between both sides so that they don't become battlegrounds amidst a Cold War climate, similar to the situation in Cyprus. Ultimately though, I do see a conflict arising at least once between Israeli territories and the Palestinian territories. Now, if this was to happen, 
I think that Israel would be able to survive, even if it has less land than previously, as it still has funding and the backing from the US and some European countries like Britain and France. The issue of Jerusalem might be a bit bigger in this timeline, as you can see from the map that it's surrounded by the Palestinian side. I don't think that a free city works, as it never does historically. This might draw some issues along the way, as obviously both sides see the significance of the city and want it within their state. This could go many different ways, and honestly I think the most peaceful way to achieve this is to divide the city into east and west, just like Berlin, so that both sides get some territory there, and maybe citizens that live within can have free access to the other side, a bit like Nicosia in Cyprus. Of course, I don't condone having a city split, but if peace is retained rather than a conflict ensuing, then I'm down for that. To make it more interesting though, maybe a blockade occurs at some point and the Israelis are forced to have an airlift to get supplies to their population within West Jerusalem. Overall though, the blockade is not long term and there is relative peace within Jerusalem and the adjacent provinces. So, in this timeline, unless there is a peace from the get-go and the Israelis and Palestinians live in their newly proclaimed states, then there is a very good chance that it may just descend into what ended up occurring in our timeline to some degree. Particularly if, during the Cold War, one of the sides becomes very militant and receives backing from one of the superpowers if things get a little politically agitated or heated. All in all though, assuming that no major conflict emerges between the two sides, I actually think that the 1947 borders would be more or less respected if there's no serious major conflicts that persist in the future, or at worst a low-level border conflict. If just one agreement could be finalized and respected, then it would maybe set a precedent within the region. Although, in between the borders of each state there is a demilitarized zone to prevent future conflict, although over time this may be demilitarized depending on the current geopolitical situation. Maybe this is just a bit of wishful thinking though. Of course, it is really impossible to say, and more than likely that there would be at least a conflict that does happen in the future. I imagine that if the Israelis get invaded by Arab states, they would probably try to expand their territory to prevent future invasions, which is what has happened in our timeline anyway. In any of the scenarios though, I don't see there being a complete Arab victory where Israel is wiped off the map, because Israel is too strong and there would be too much international backing, particularly from the US and especially after the decades following World War II. So yeah, that was my take on the whole thing. We either have a map of what the UN plan in 1947 looked like, or just a slightly modified one, maybe with a demilitarized zone in the middle, and a divided Jerusalem. Of course, this is easier said than done, and I doubt that even in this scenario, a permanent peace would be attained. So, that's pretty much it. I don't condone with what is going on there at the moment, and I understand that the topic is very sensitive, and I was just trying to imagine a more peaceful scenario to a very complex conflict that has persisted for nearly 80 years now. For all the people that are currently suffering in the conflict, hopefully a peace comes soon that is more permanent for both sides. Peace out guys, I'll see you in the next one.